Hey everybody, welcome back to my bow shop. Today's topic is how to get into bow hunting. The biggest thing that I'll say is ignore the influencer. Every influencer out there, myself included, has motivation to lean you towards something specific. I've had my archery shop now for about 10 months. And so I've been able to talk with a lot of different people coming in the doors that are at different levels of hunting or different levels of archery. And I've been able to gather a lot of information um, and ask a lot of questions. There's a lot of new people as well as a lot of veterans in archery, but I've been able to ask them a lot of questions and gather some information on how a person can get into bow hunting. It's definitely going to be a lot easier for someone that has hunting experience and a, a hunting background to get into archery because they understand and they've experienced the hunting process of it. Whereas somebody that's new into hunting is taking on the full gamut of it. So here are some of the notes that I've jotted down that a person could consider as you find yourself getting into bow hunting. Are you fully committed to the process? Are you fully committed to eat what you kill, process the meat, have it processed? Are you fully committed to how hard bow hunting is going to be? The second thing would be, do you have any hunting experience at all? Or I would also lump in outdoor experience, whether it's fishing or camping out, backpacking, any of that kind of thing. A lot of people coming into the doors have had hunting experience. They've gun hunted for years or they've hunted with family or they did as a youth and are now getting back into it. And so there's a, there's a level of, of hunting experience there. That's great because that's only gonna help you to be that much, um, that much better early on in, in archery. Number three, do you have any friends or coworkers that hunt? That's gonna be huge. Like if you can have a mentor or a friend or someone to go through this process with, it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable and you're gonna be able to share and bounce ideas off. Unless you're just that individual that just has to do everything on their own or just, and just thrives on that. It'd be great to see if you had any friends or coworkers or associates or anybody that you know that has any, any bow hunting experience that would be willing to, to give you some information. And then do you have the time and the resources? Do you have time to get it, dedicate to shooting your bow? Do you have time to dedicate to sighting it in and sighting it in with broadheads and getting everything packaged together like it needs to be? I've worked with a lot of adults and youth since opening the shop that have had zero experience with shooting a bow. And by the time they leave the shop here, they've shot the bow dozens of times. They've gotten themselves experience with it. They like that feeling. They like the emotion. They like, you know, the aggression of when that arrow goes off. Like they've really enjoyed that. Number six, ask questions. Ask yourself questions, ask computer questions, ask people questions, ask your friends questions. Take or retake hunter safety or hunter's education. In a later video, I'll go through kind of the process of this. It's really simple. Um, they've made it to where you can do all of the course online, go through at your own time, your own leisure, go through all the questions. It's also a very educational program. Even if you took it as a kid and hunted as a kid and you took some time off and you're new getting back into hunting, I suggest to retake it. Get yourself signed up, logged on, and go through it and refresh yourself with all that information. Some states have an archery specific course. I know here in Nevada, they've got one. Um, I believe Idaho has one, so you just have to check with your state. Some of them are mandatory, some are not. Uh, you can meet others that are in your similar situation. When I took, went through the course with my son, there were several adults in there. There were several younger adults, older adults, taking the class, whether they were retaking it or taking it for the first time. There's a lot of people in there that, were, that are in your similar situation. Don't be afraid to ask questions of everyone, your instructors of the course, talking to people in the class, just ask questions. The third one on here that we, we talked about with customers is getting to know your local bow shop. That's been probably the most humbling thing and the most thing that I'm grateful for with opening the shop here is the numbers of people coming in the door that just say thank you. They're, Excited to have a professional hunting shop in the area. And myself and my staff know what they're doing. We're a hunting shop, we understand it. Not all bow shops are hunting shops, and that's okay. You'll get the information that you need from them if that's all, all you've got. You'll get the archery side of things and the, archery, the educational side of things. Hang out and learn. Meet other hunters who might be willing to help. We have a lot of guys that spend a lot of time in here. We've created a lounge. We've created an open, welcome environment. Um, we've got a working range that is for customers. It's not open to the public. It's for someone that needs that one-on-one that -on -one attention. It's for someone that needs to fine tune their, their site or their, their gear, their setup. 
You know, we're totally focused on building confidence in here and being a, a shop of information. Not all hunters are open with information. You know, I'm not going to be open to specific details or areas, and most guys probably aren't, but that's okay. At least I feel like most hunters are willing to help. If you're genuine and in asking the questions and you're just not a ding dong, just don't be a ding dong. Uh, number five, demo all the bows, shoot them, see what you like. In a later video, I don't know what that one's going to be titled, so you probably just have to search it. It's probably going to be how to choose a bow or how to choose your accessories. We're going to actually go through the steps and the process of choosing a bow. And what we'll show is all the price points that we have. We'll also show all of the styles, which they're all fairly similar in those regards, but also, you know, some of the comparisons of, of how they might be set up. And then we're going to break down the process of, of how to set those up. And um, so that we can kind of show, show what you might go through as you're, as you're getting into the process. Qualify their budget, qualify their their skill level or interest level, qualify you know their, their desires, their interests, what they really want out of it, qualify if they're brand loyal or a, a brand person, and then just leave it, up, leave it up to them from there. If you do have a bow and you've, you've gone through that process, go to the 3D shoots, and it's, it's awesome. There's just a great people out there and great information to be had, and it's a great experience to shoot 3D targets, a lot of true hunting situations. Um, do your research online. There's this video, there's podcasts, there's all of the solo hunter hunting videos, there's you name it. So many, so many resources out there. The, the biggest thing that I'll say is ignore the influencer. You've got to figure it out for yourself. But every influencer out there, myself included, has motivation to lean you towards something specific. Um, and it shouldn't be that way for you. Shoot every bow that you have uh, available to you. Uh, learn about wildlife behaviors. I think that's, a, that's one that a lot of people skip. Ah, it's just, my brain hurts, there's so much to it. You know, even just like a deer track of just different things of, you know, how a buck track is different from a doe track and directions and just, there's so much information there. Maybe I'll try to get some videos out on that too, but there's just, it's just so much fun to learn about the animals that you're going to be hunting and learn about their behaviors. And then research the regulations in your area and the hunting seasons. Each state has its wildlife departments. Some of them, you know, it's Fish and Game. Some of them it's Department of Wildlife. Some of it's Parks and Wildlife. It's just figuring out for you within your specific state and your, your area, what is it called? And there's, Every state has a website dedicated to hunting and fishing information. Seasons, dates, regulations, everything. It's all in one central location. You just have to have the patience and the desire to read it. Getting into hunting and bow hunting specifically is not a picture book. You've got to do the reading and you've got to do the learning. And it's not just asking questions and only that of people that know. It's you've got to do some legwork on your own. And then there's a lot of resources out there. Uh, Onyx has packaged a lot of resources within their app. And then lastly, as this video has gone way longer than I wanted to, is talk to your wildlife departments. They want to help. I don't think people realize and recognize how much effort has, put in, has been put in through these wildlife agencies to gather information and to get it out there. Just, they're not marketing agencies. They're not PR firms. They're not great at social media but the information is there. It's up to us to find it. It's up to you to find it. So that's enough of my rambling. Um, hopefully as I move on through these videos, we'll get these refined a little bit and give you the information. I really do want to help and I really do want you all to be successful. Uh, above all, I appreciate all the support that you've shown Solo Hunter brand over the years. Check out our apparel, uh, the pro shop. Everything is at solohunter.com. Thank you very much and I'll see you again next time.